Hi guys, it's me, Karen. Hope y'all are doing well. Um, I'm just gonna put out this little video because I've had a few questions lately about how to keep your soldering tip uh, clean and shiny and healthy. So that's what this is gonna be, a short, uh, just a little short discussion about what I found works best for me. Others may have their opinions of what works best for them, and I would suggest that you try them all, and you will come up with the best way for you. Um, but before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to a new contributor who bought me a cup of coffee. Thank you so much. Their uh, screen name is Happy Monkey Artist. Wow. Okay, I'd love to see your work for sure. But thank you so much, Happy. I am happy that you thought enough of my videos to support my channel. So thank you so much. Okay, so y'all know if you've watched anything that I work with a Hacko FX601. And that was after a year of experimenting with a total of seven different soldering irons. And I literally, when I got this one, I had made the decision that if this didn't suit my liking, that was it. That I obviously wasn't cut out to do this craft. So very, very happy that it indeed suits my needs and I've gone on to create amazing pieces at least in my opinion I love them and um, if you do also know anything about me I'm in three local shops I have an Etsy store I sell on Facebook haven't done too much on Instagram and then in person I've only done one local market will never do it again it wasn't worth my time so I'm pretty busy and I never in a million years expected this to happen because I started making jewelry for my mental health back in um, early 2020 kind of right after COVID was announced so anyway that's a little bit of history so uh, this has been sitting and I'm gonna you see the tip here I hope. Um, so I'm gonna turn it up. I normally work about 360 Celsius. This soldering iron is in Celsius and it's Japanese made, um, but I'm sure that made in Malaysia. Um, but it's, it's quite popular with um, stained glass artists as well. So I just turned it up to 360. You can see it's, you know, it's been sitting, so it does have some oxidation on it. My normal is I will then just use my wire brush container, just put it in there and give it a little twist, and voila, it's nice and bright and shiny. And when I'm done my session, I will use this little tip tinner that I got on Amazon. You can see it's, I don't know what exactly it is, but before I shut it down, I put it in there. It melts the stuff a little bit. It starts to tin. You'll see it smokes quite a bit. So have your mask on, have your exhaust on your fans all that and then i shut it down now this machine doesn't go completely off it goes down to 240 so always remember to unplug your machine right so i always tin it with this tip tinner before i shut it down now when I first started um, playing, and uh, 
pretty much all of the other soldering irons I purchased came with this setup. This little sponge that they say just dampen, not soaking wet. And you can see I had used this. As you can see some solder embedded in there. What I didn't like, oh, yeah, look, before I get ahead of myself. So normally what everybody talks about is you use this to clean your tip, right? You wipe it off. And it does, it does a nice job. So you can do that and it's just damp. You'll have to clean this out occasionally, you know, open it up and get the, the embedded solder out of it. You can see it will kind of start to burn the sponge if it's not kept nice and moist. But my problem with that is I'm working and I'm not thinking about it and I give it a swipe. And what was happening for me is that the action of that, I would end up with getting little bits of hot solder and burn my hand, or one time I think a little piece ended up on the top of my leg, and it happens that quick. But it's like, oh, and it's not a big, big burn, but it's enough to get your attention. So I was like, mm, I don't like that. What can I do instead? So when I saw these types of things, I'm like, okay, that keeps it inside. The solder isn't gonna. Now, if you swipe it with these, it's gonna ha do the same thing. You're gonna give that little bits of solder the opportunity to come flying out. So I don't recommend using it to swipe, but just stick your tip gently in there and just give it a twist or two. In fact, if you read the manufacturer, at least of Heiko, what came with my iron, that was their recommendation, was to get one of these types of, I think they're brass. This one's brass. This one I think is copper. It looks like copper to me. Yeah. And um, that's what they recommended for the long life of the tip. Okay, so those are what I use. Some other stained glass artists is the only ones I've seen use this technique. It's just similar to the sponge. They'll have a damp towel at their bench and then occasionally they'll do that and wipe it. The other downside of using anything that's wet or cold and damp is that it's going to affect the temperature. I mean, it's just minimal, you know, but the temperature for sure will drop because you're, this is cold, you know, this is cool. So, you know, if you're working really fast and you're in a, you know, in the groove and you do this and you come back to your piece and it doesn't seem hot or as hot as it was, it isn't. And it'll take a couple seconds to get back up to heat. So that's the other downside of using anything wet. So this is my preference, these. And um, we'll talk about these as well. Uh, they get can get compressed, like you see, this is how it comes, nice and fluffy, and it'll get compressed after a while. And if you take it, the brush out of the container, you're gonna see bits of solder down in there and bits of the, um, of the, you know, the wire brush and you can see what happens there. But occasionally it's a good idea to take it out, dump those uh, little bits um, in, a, in the trash and then take this, let me see if I can do this over the trash, hang on. Here we go. I'll just put it over a napkin. Take it out and you can see it's pretty compressed and just pull pull these apart a little bit. And what that'll do is it'll make it nice and fluffy again and it'll kind of get some of those bits of solder out of there. Right. And then you can put it back in the container. And It'll be ready to go. Okay. Now, the other thing we'll talk about, let me clean this up. We'll talk about this uh, application. 
It's a sal ammoniac, sal ammoniac block. It's very, very hard. I mean, like almost like a rock. And yes, it is used in a lot of soldering applications. You can see how little I used it. Um, it was highly recommended by several people when I was in the struggling mode. Like, why isn't my solder hot? You know, why isn't my soldering tip staying hot? Why isn't melting, you know, the second layer, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you need this, you need, you know, you need that. And, and um, I mean, yeah, it, it cleans the tip, no doubt about it. Let me zoom in for you. Not that you'll be able to notice, but ideally, yeah, you'll see is you rub it on there and it, it'll clean it. Now I've seen people dig it in there or make a hole so their tip can go in there and they just, and man, it, it will smoke. And I just, I don't know, something in me <laughs> set out to research this. And um, what I discovered, and do your own research for sure, is that this is typically used if, say, you get an old iron and it's just severely corroded. The tip is still good, but it's severely corroded with layers and layers. This will do the trick and bring it back probably to a nice, shiny tip. Um, it's really not, in the research I did, it's not really designed to be used on a daily basis or regular soldering applications as it's very, very toxic and very um, acidic and corrosive in itself. And it'll eat up that tip um, quicker than any of these other applications. So, I mean, I was even um, in several of the research articles I did, they even suggested, because it's so toxic, like to use gloves when you touch it, <laughs> to wash your hands after use, and when storing it, to keep it in an airtight container of some sort. So I always keep it in a baggie, so because it's emitting fumes even when it's not in use. So use at your own risk. I don't like this stuff at all. I mean, we have enough toxic things in the world, and then we're definitely doing uh, so, using some toxic chemicals and stuff with the soldering. So I don't want to intentionally add, you know, to it if I don't have to. So that's about it, guys. Do your own research. Um, experiment with things. If you start with a good tip, use the manufacturer's recommendations, which in this situation with the HACO, they suggested one of these. And it's been working just fine. And as, like I said, without doing the swiping motion, I haven't had any little bits of solder come flying off or land in my lap or anything because I'm keeping it in there. And as you saw, the extra bit that comes off the soldering iron ends up at the bottom of this container. So that's how I keep my tips clean. And I've had this iron with the same tip now for over a year and a half. And it still looks brand new. So that's my educational video for today. I hope you learned a little something and, and you know, experiment for yourself and use what works best for you and your equipment. Okay, thanks again, you guys. I appreciate your support. Bye.